Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so that you can live life on your own terms. It's been a while since I've uploaded. Life has been absolutely crazy, but that's just going to make for better uploads in the future. But anyways, in today's video, you're about to see an in-depth conversation between me and one of my loyal subscribers, and we're going to have a very, very, very good conversation about the struggles of saving money and how you can get past that. And real quick, right before we get into this video, I just want to tell you something real quick i'm about to open these calls to the public and all you can get on with me and have these one-on-one -on -one conversations you might be featured on youtube or maybe even on patreon just depends and just speaking of this video right here this is just a clip uh, me and this person her name is lynn we went back and forth for a while on this call and it was a really good call it was about an hour long total so you're gonna see some snips and pieces of it on this channel but the whole thing is going to be on patreon with that said, let's get into this video. All right, so Lynn, thank you for joining me today. Just wanted to talk with you about a few personal finance topics. I know you're very passionate about the topic yourself. So uh, something you spoke to me about before is that you're passionate about like the behavioral aspect of money. I just wanna know kind of what you mean by that, what you've seen in your life and um, what you take away from it so that you change financial habits throughout your life. Of course, immediately my initial thought went to how my family has been with money and how they treat money or how they let it i don't want to say like overrule their life but in a way yes um and i don't mean that in a disrespectful manner um but we should really respect money and like what it can offer us in terms of opportunity but people will do certain things out of money and like your mind automatically thinks of the negative but with money you can do positives as well like it's a positive sum game sometimes too so that's why oh so emotional <laughs> it's so beautiful yeah so they respect money like do you mean you've seen people maybe because of their lack of knowledge of money they didn't right like this so what are some examples of like seeing people not whether it's family or friends or whoever you've seen like what are some examples of not respecting that what it so it's so beautiful but um i don't know i i think it's i don't want to be like a moral judgment of character but it really does say something about a person's like a person's personality like in general if you just look at their credit card statement and you're like oh so you you know like maybe we could step into like judgment territory but i don't mean it in a condescending way mm -hmm. like yeah you know i'm like oh she, she just got Starbucks like today and every other day. And I don't know, there's a lot of shame in that. And I don't want to come from it that way. It's easy to be like, oh, you know, look at them and their stupid purchase. You see a lot of like shame in it when it comes to this yeah. habits. And maybe we don't know how much this person makes. Maybe they're in debt. Maybe they're not. But right. across the world, they are in debt. So... I think that was really interesting when you talked about the Starbucks because a lot of the teachings I hear online, like in general, is that stop stop buying the coffee, save your money, save your money. And it's like, right. in my opinion, that's not like the best way to save money just by holding off on buying coffee. like the Starbucks. Depriving yourself. Yeah, yeah. or like uh, going out for fast food. That's why I just made a video about like how to save money without missing out on life. Because I mean, part of right. life, you want to be able to go somewhere like Starbucks and be able to get you a coffee. Like if you can't afford to buy yourself a Starbucks coffee every once in a while, like you, you got bigger issues than finance. exactly. Come exactly. Up. You've got bigger fish to fry. You have like, exactly. So, so I want to talk about like the, the shame aspect of it. Like, where do you think yeah. that comes from and where, where do you think people identify with that? Um, I think it comes from a superiority complex <laughs> of like thinking that they're, better off because they don't need a substance or they don't need what everyone else indulges in or like I'm addicted to Starbucks coffee and then it's yeah it's coming from this place of like I'm better than you that's where that's where I think not the only you know part of it but yeah but do you think it does become a problem with finances when people do spend money on Starbucks coffee or when people do go out and eat fast food all the time? Like what, what are your, absolutely. Your... Absolutely. Oh, go, go ahead. What, what's your, what? What's your opinion on that? Like, uh, 
I know you said that it can obviously cause problems, but like, how deep do you think it goes? Um, it's so deep beyond what we can understand because people tend to hide those things. That's why we were taught to not talk about it. It's taboo. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's much deeper and more rooted than people realize. Then it's been made out to be a joke. Like, oh, you're going to McDonald's like and you're, you know, and it's bad for you, but it's seen as a joke because and like it's seen as not taken as seriously because it's, you know, so normal and average and socialized. Yeah. Mm, I want to talk more about um, about what you just said. So, so mm, it's something that we really can't understand, right? It's something right. that is hard to fathom, but in, in my opinion is this, the little minute purchases that you make throughout your lifetime or throughout a year or throughout a month or whatever, it's really not, that big of a deal unless right. like if you do it in moderation it's fine that's why i always say you should plan for it you should budget for it you should have like something in there like it's just like if you need to make time for something you're going to squeeze that time in so it's the same thing with your money you're just going to squeeze that in your budget and like you might dial back on something else but like i was saying earlier if you can't purchase some coffee like and i'm, yeah. I'm not a drinker but if you can't purchase some coffee like that you got bigger fish to fry so to me, it's all about priorities. It's about your necessities and then everything else comes later. And sure, you might want something. You might want some like some Ray-Bans. You might want some <laughs> shoes, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what type of stuff you buy, but like makeup, whatever the case is, you can get those things every now and then, but people go over Absolutely. Feel like, well, I deserve this because I make this much money and I worked hard to get here. And you probably did, but you got to remember you worked just as hard to probably yourself in like debt or something like that. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, now you made me think about what I have bought in the past month or so and, you know, <laughs> really reflect on what I've purchased myself. Um, well, okay. the, the whole point of my channel is it's not to like feel guilty about what you spend. Yeah. It's to really think about what you're spending. And I mean, there's nothing. Oh, like absolutely. Reading. Like if you want something now, if you go to the mall right now and you see something you want, literally just wait a week before buying it. Guarantee you won't want it anymore. And if you do, then cool, buy it Same. and it'll probably make you happy. But I do the I do that actually. I love, I love doing that. It's like a challenge with myself, um, like how long I can go without wanting or thinking about it. And if yeah. I need it again, then I uh, you know it'll still be there. Right. Which is nice. Yeah. And it's it's just like a. Just delay that gratification because you don't need it right now. You you went so long without it anyways. So you technically don't even need it right now. So, but some things get marketed in such a way that you do need them. So I, I brought up Ray yeah. right now. It's the summertime. So it's obviously hot outside of super bright. <laughs> they're going to market it as if you need it. Like your eyes need that protection from the sun, which they do, but they yes. market it so geniusly that you need their brand specifically. You don't need no other brand. You need their brand. I think that's what people kind of get caught up in the status of it because it's like borderline a necessity, but also it's like a status symbol at the same time. It's similar to the iPhone. And I, I love iPhones, but I love iPhones. If I couldn't <laughs> afford one, you best believe I wouldn't have an iPhone because mm. all what your wallets can support. And if your wallet can't support that, then I mean, you, you got to think about some things. You might need to walk around with a, a phone that is quote unquote substandard, even though pretty much any phone you get right now is going to be a powerful computer, like mini computer in your hand. So when people get caught up in the, well, I want an iPhone 12. Right. You know, I, I want a Galaxy, whatever the new Samsung is. So that's my opinion on that. Um, I don't disagree with you. Um, yeah. I'm really proud of myself for having that habit of, De like not depriving myself but thinking of it as a challenge rather than like missing out on something you know because I don't I have everything I need which is good <laughs> so I'm very proud of it so how um, do you think that's affected your life like if you weren't the way you are now how would okay. that affect you and like how were you before this I think age has something to do with it as well and like that we're in the age of the internet right mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known you at all if it wasn't for your channel um yeah if it wasn't for the internet I would not be the person I am today because I 
per, like I specifically seek out for money related topics because it's just entertaining as well to me. So it's good habits to have and how I was before. I don't know. I was in, I was in school <laughs> and I was paying off my debt and it wasn't that much, which is good. So yeah. 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 Hmm. Lower There's, income, but you know, yeah, that's the thing. That's kind of where I was too. It was like school, low income type of thing where you kind of had no choice but to learn how to save money. And it's a very simple concept. Saving money is super simple. Like you literally hold on to as much money as you can. Right. But people are always searching. I mean, if you look at how many people search, I think it's like a um, hundred and something thousand. No, it might even be a million and something people who search how to save money every single month on Google or on YouTube. <laughs> We all know how to do it, but we don't do it. We want to, they, they really want to know the discipline behind it. So I say all that to say this, like, what was kind of that moment in your life where uh, you feel like you needed to do something like where you need, where you knew that money was the epiphany the moment you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your light bulb moment, so to speak. My light bulb. Um, okay. It's kind of materialistic, but it's a solid point is when, I noticed that like the clothes that I used to like, you know, I'm not going to shame, but um, you know, it was lower grade and lower quality. Right. And I was wondering why it deteriorated so quickly and nobody ever taught me like that higher quality does actually mean better most times. Right. Sometimes you can like, you know, have a budget item of something, but um, yeah, that was my sort of epiphany moment. And it's like, so such a privilege I'm really grateful that that was the only kind of uh bearing that I had like a negative that I had where I was like what's up with all my clothes why like what what's up with the phone that I have like why did it just glitch and break so easily um Mm. so that was yeah that was when I realized that oh you know I kind of need to step up my game of like um seek out different streams of income and or make more money, you know, get out there and actually work and save and be disciplined enough to, you know, splurge on the higher end once, you know, you can just purchase it once item. Yeah. Wow. Gratefully. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because I think whenever you look for like, uh, not you necessarily, but just like anyone who looks for personal finance topics and people are saying, save your money, save your money. It's like, you have to realize there's a reason why you're saving your money. It's either for a need or for a want. There's not really a whole lot of in between. Of course, there's like some, some you're saving for what if moments, but usually people right. want nice things. I like nice things. I Me too. <laughs> I'm wearing a Nike shirt right now. So, I mean, <laughs> nice things are important. And I think we make our own money. We work hard for it. We should be able to get what we want, but we need to be careful with our money when we're doing that. And I think that's a really big key in what you said. Like you said, uh, exactly. the lower quality items technically waste your money because you have to buy them more often because they deteriorate so fast. The clothes, the cell phones, all that good stuff. So I think it's really important what you just said. Now, mine was more of like a... It was more of like a not not tragic moment. I guess it's like a one of Aww. those life hits you in the face types of moments when and I think I might have shared bits and pieces of this on YouTube, but I'll just share the whole thing sure. right now. But my my moment, I call it like uh, the Matrix moment where you take the red pill because you actually see life for what it is. <laughs> so my moment was it was kind of a few things, but basically. Sure. It started off when I was 20. I did this internship at this company that will rena- remain unmentioned. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, the, the tea is there. <laughs> I was I was doing an internship and I was making like, it was like $19 an hour. And it was more money than I've ever seen in my life. And then I also got overtime like uh, for eight hours every single week. So I, I was on cloud nine. I thought I was just big balling in. I, was, I made like probably in a, in a three month period, I probably made like 20,000, maybe close to $25,000. And I was just, mm-hmm. I was like, man. So uh, at that time I was materialistic as well. I mean, I'm not, not that I'm not, uh, I was really materialistic then. I, I was like, I want to get a Mercedes. I want to get Nike, this, <laughs> that, all of this. I was like, I, I just want to. Did you get that Mercedes? Did you get that Mercedes? 
<laughs> no, I, I kept my I kept the same car I've had since I was uh, I got my first car actually when I was 20 it was like six thousand uh, dollars and okay. uh, my paid me paid for it and then I paid him back for it and everything and that's how I got my first car but like once mm -hmm. I had that and it was paid for and everything I was like man I'm single I don't well I wasn't like single at the time but I was like I'm single as in like I'm not married like I'm, I'm not yeah. I don't have to, like I'm, I'm living by myself and um, my car was paid off and everything. And I was like, man, this is, uh, I can get whatever I want. If, especially if I get the <laughs> full-time job. Because, like, the full-time job pay was way more than the internship pay. It was, like, it was, like, close to $20 more an hour. So, anyways, went back to school. And that was kind of when I went to back to, back to doing, like, a part-time job, like, $10 per hour. So, mm -hmm. I had to be careful with my money. But then when I got, when I graduated, that was when everything hit the fan. That was when it was like just seeing all kinds of crazy stuff, having people getting walked out, seeing how cutthroat the business really was. They kind of right. got, it was like a butterflies and rainbows. Like you're going to make so much money. You're going to make so much improvements to just, all right, you mess up one time, you're gone. You know what I'm saying? You look at somebody the wrong way, you're gone. You're getting walked out today. And I saw people get walked out and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, man. and that was the moment for me. Like you have to have multiple streams of income. And that was when I started to look on YouTube and stuff and learn about passive income. I didn't even know what passive income was. So I was like 21, 22 years old. And I was upset because I didn't even know <laughs> what these things were. And they were something that existed since pretty much the beginning of money existing. So that was when I started to learn and get into YouTube and all that good stuff. But that moments like that, that's what kind of builds that that discipline because it's like, I don't mind sacrificing a few years of my life to build passive income streams or to build even just other streams of income because mm -hmm. I know if you're in your mid forties and you get walked out of the building and you have kids and like a wife and a, yeah. whole and a house and you don't have anything else to fall back on, now your whole life has changed. Your entire Absolutely. life your family has changed. Uh, potentially the quality of your marriage could change. See that happen yeah. too. So I just played a lot of what ifs in my head and that's pretty much what happened for me.